So today we went over all the guard retention. I'll, I'll talk about the specific maneuvers we learned later. Um, but um, in the rolls, I had a lot of trouble. Um, so Tim had told us, had told me to um, not. Well, he's like, you should sit up. <laughs> Uh, you shouldn't be on your back when you're doing guard retention, when your opponent's standing. Um, you should be on your back, on your butt, and you should scoot around on your butt. Um, and then get a cross collar, get the Dela Um So I was doing that today. Well, Jason showed techniques from when you're on your back. I agree with Tim more. I think on your back is less desirable. You can get up to your, to sitting up. It's like a lot stronger than lying down than being on your back because uh, you have a lot more maneuverability when you're um, on your butt. Plus you can use your arms. Um, yeah, plus you can use your arms. Um, so, yeah, um, so, well, anyway, so I was just practicing on the back because that's what we learned today, um, but fitting all this stuff together is kind of confusing, um, just sort of getting, like, a working model in my head is, like, kind of difficult right now. Hold on a second. Um, so then I was talking, I was rolling with one guy, Steven, he's much bigger than me, and he was like, you don't want to really get into De La Hiva with a bigger guy, because they'll just like run up into you, um, like squash your hook, which has been happening. I thought it was because I wasn't getting it correctly, but yeah. So I'm sure about that. Uh, so he recommended getting grips first. So getting like a sleeve grip and then using those sleeve grips to get into a guard. And that guard would be like more long distance, like getting your feet on their hips. And then, so that's the initial guard is sleeve, hip, guard, and then you go from there into like a lasso or a spider or directly into like a tripod sweep or um, or even like Del Hilo. But you want to get the sleeve grips before you maneuver into that, I think was his point. So I can see that being the case, but I'm also unsure about like sleeve grips because I feel like people break my sleeve grips pretty easily and I'm not sure why that's the case. Like, maybe because I'm not twisting. I think you're supposed to twist and lock them. Um, so I'm unsure about, unsure about the grips. Um, also I think it needs to be a little bit more proactive because my pressure with my legs is not that strong. So it's like kind of useless even having my legs up on the hips at this point um, because they're not really, do I need to put more pressure through them. Uh, or like, you know, get into a recognizable guard. I, I think right now I don't really have a plan. Um, it was just Del Hiva to sit up guard. But Steven made a point that if someone's a lot bigger than me, they can just sort of pressure pass through all that. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to figure that out. Right now, it just feels like there's a lot of pieces. I don't know how they fit together. I don't even know which pieces uh, I should even use, which pieces I need to like put aside right now. Um, yeah, but. At least this should be good, like easy to practice because I can just disengage and then 
force someone into trying to pass me, I guess. Uh, and then I could practice it. So, um, I rolled with Leo and he was just wrecked me on it. Um, I was doing what Steven told me. I was trying to do what Steven told me. It wasn't working out so well. Um, he was just, I would get one foot on him, then he would step across and then I would get folded up. That happened like five times. Um, so I need to figure that out. Yeah. So today we worked on guard retention. Um, we started from where, if we we're flat on our back and our point is standing. Um, what do we do? So there's a, f I think there's three things to keep in mind. One is. Uh, you want to be kind of in a crunch the whole time. You don't want your shoulders to be flat on the ground. You want to use your elbows for mobility. So instead of like worming your way around, you can uh, get on your elbows, uh, not get on your elbows, but use your elbows to rotate and keep your opponent in front of you. Um, you want to bring your legs in and have like a turtle sort of posture. So your, your knees are kind of in front of you, protecting you. That's because um, you will, it's very unlikely that you'll be able to use your legs to um, initiate contact. So there's much more mobility than you, so you can go around you and you won't be able to like use your legs as like a long distance sort of um, guard. Uh, so you wanna, um, keep them tight to you. Um, so, oh, and then you want to have your, you, if he has your, his hands on you, on your legs, you want to use, you want to frame your knees. So his hands are your knees, and then you want to support your knees from the bottom with your hand, with your wrist. So you want to put your elbow on the ground, and then have a straight line through your arm to your knee and C-grip your knee. Um, C-grip your knee. Uh, to, to frame your legs. Um, and then, if he gets grips on your knees and you know elevates your legs, then you want to pummel your feet in and get like a spider um, Type um, guard. Um, yeah. So once you establish your legs, then you can get, then you can get your grips with your hands. Um, so we drilled them out a bit, just keeping our opponent in front of us and pummeling our feet until we get like a good uh, guard on the opponent. All right. So then we went through different stages of a pass and what our response should be in each one. So the first one, so that was the first one is like, they're not engaged at all. Second one is they engage and now they're in front of our knees. And then after that is uh, they're in front of our knees and they have a knee down blocking us. And then the third one is they have two knees down and they're almost chest to chest. And then the last one is their chest to chest, um, but their head they haven't controlled their head yet, so they're not really inside of control. So if they are passing, if they pass our knees, but they don't have anything else, uh, you, you kind of do like an arm drag. So let's say they're passing on the right, they have knee control, both knees. Um, so now you, because they have your knees, their wrists are exposed. So you, if they're passing to you on your right, with your right hand, you grab their left sleeve. And they're pushing your knees anyway. So you just keep pushing in the direction that they're pushing as you sit up. So your right hand grabs their left sleeve and pushes away from you. Um, then your left hand, use your left hand to scoot back 
and then you can re re square up. You can square up and, and reestablish your guard. Um, second is if they have one knee, they're past you, and then they have one knee down blocking, so you can't do the thing we just said. In this case, you. Um, in this case, you frame on the nearest shoulder with your. If, again, if he's passing on the right side, with your right hand. Uh, you don't want to have a straight arm, so you have your your elbow in your ribs and you're framing on his lead shoulder. Um, and then you get your top leg in. Um, and then your bottom leg in and, and square up and you guys in there. Uh, I think. <laughs> and the third one is he has both knees down. Okay, that's that's right. He has both knees down. Now, oh, okay, sorry. The one before, he has one knee down. Okay, so in this case, yes. You frame on his shoulder with your elbow tucked in, and then with the other arm, you um, want to protect your head. So you want to prevent him from bringing his arm around and and getting control of your neck. Um, so you can do like an iron squirrel kind of thing, or, <coughs> um, yeah, but you just wanna protect your neck and then you wanna flex your body so to bring your arm away. So he's gonna have pressure on your lower body and on your right arm because that's what's framing him. So you can flex your body, you can extend the top of your body out and away with your arm and you need to use that arm to so he can't get like a collar grip or control your head right. um, so you sort of flex out and then that gives you space to bring your legs in and regard so the third one is um, he has both knees down past your legs in this case you frame against his hip with your right leg, uh, right hand, um, and then frame against his hip with the right hand, uh, sock, babe. Um, with your elbow bent tucked into your ribs again. Wait, I'm getting this mixed up with the other one. Okay. Yes, you do that, and then with the left hand, you frame on the shoulder. I think you, you might frame with the shoulder. And then you bring your legs in. There was something about... Uh, okay, I think what it is, is because both, both knees are down, you can't bring your your bottom leg in. So you frame on the hip. Okay, I think this is what it is. You frame on the hip. And then that allows you to bring your top leg in to frame. Then you move the the right hand, which was on the hip, to his shoulder and use the shoulder and then your upper leg that you brought in to create a little bit more space and then you can bring your left leg in. I think that's where this one is. This, this and when there's only one when there's only one knee in so the step before the situation before this then I think you can bring the lower leg in. Um, I think bringing the lower leg in is preferable, it's stronger, but sometimes you can't bring the lower leg in first, so you bring the upper leg in to frame 
and that allows you to get enough space to bring your lower leg in. So when one leg, when one knee is down, I think you try to bring the lower leg in first. And when two knees are down, you're unable to bring your lower leg in, knee in. So you bring the upper knee in, which gives you enough space to bring your lower knee in. All right, so then the last one is both knees are down and his head is down across your torso, but he doesn't have control of your head. In this case, you frame against the hip, and then you bring your left arm under his head, and you pull his head across your body, so his head is on the same side as your hip, um, and then you get a inside the collar grip. to prevent him from moving his head. And then you can frame against that, frame against him using that collar grip. Um, get your upper leg in, upper knee in, and then um, use that space to get your lower knee in, and then you retrain again. So that's all the techniques that we did today.